Hello and welcome to the discussion on Remainder Theorem. This is brought to you by Handa Ka Fanda. Before we get started with the Remainder Theorem, there are a few basic things that we need to know. Suppose we want to find out the remainder of a number from 2, from 4, from 5. Then we can simply use the technique that we already learned in the divisibility test. For example, if I have to find out the remainder of a particular number from 2, I'll just look at the last digit and find out its remainder from 2. If I have to find out the remainder of a number from 8, I'll just look at the last 3 digits and do the same. Very similarly, if I have to find out the remainder of a number from 11, I'll first apply the divisibility formula that the sum of the digits at the odd places minus the sum of the digits at the even places and figure out the remainder from that. However, for long complicated numbers, here is what we can do. Remainder of A into B from particular number C is given by we first find out the remainder of A from C, we find out the remainder of B from C and we can just multiply them to get an answer. Instead of this, if instead of multiplication that is, if it was A plus B, then I would have just What I am trying to say here is, for example, if my number is 77 to the power of 103 and I am asked to find out the remainder from 19, it looks like a very complicated problem because I cannot find out the, the value of 77 to the power of 103 leaf about the remainder. So what I'll do is, I'll just look at the remainder of 77 from 19. That is 1. So what will be the remainder for the second 77? That will also be 1. From the third one will also be 1. And very similarly, for the 103th 77, it will still be 1. So I can directly say my overall remainder in this case is 1. In the previous case, we got lucky because the remainder that we got was 1. What am I going to do if it's something else? What I mean is, suppose it is 77 to the power of 103 and I am dividing it by 5. That would mean from the first 77 I will get 2, from the next one also I will get 2, from the next one also I will get 2. So it becomes 2 to the power of 103 by 5. Now I cannot predict what will be the value of 2 to the power 103. So what do I do? Then I need to look at the cycle. There are a couple of methods. Let's first see the cycle method. 2 to the power of 1. What is the remainder from 5? 2 itself. 2 square. The value is 4. Remainder from 5 is also 4. 2 cube is 8. The remainder from 8 is 3. Now for finding out 2 to the power 4, I can use two ideas. One is I actually calculate 2 to the power 4, which comes out to be 16. And then look at the remainder from 16, uh, 16 for 5, which is 1. I can also, instead of calculating the entire value, just multiply the last result. Last result is 3, 3 into 2 is 6, remainder gives me 1. What will be the remainder for 2 to the power 5? It will, as you can see here, it will again be 1 into 2, 2, then 4, then 3, then 1, then 2, then 4, then 3, then 1. We have formed a cycle of 4. So, anything which goes by the format of 2 to the power of 4k plus 1 will give me the answer 2, 2 to the power of 4k plus 2 will give me the answer 4, 2 to the power of 4k plus 3 will give me the answer of 3, and 2 to the power of 4k will give me the answer. It was 2 to the power 103, that means my answer will be 2 to the power of 4k plus 3, or 3 in this case. If instead of this, the power was not 103 and the power was let's say 106 then it would have been of the format of 2 to the power of 4k plus 2 104 plus 2 and my answer would have been 4 there can be other variations as well instead of calculating the cycle I can apply a few other ideas let's keep the original question where it was 103 so now what I do is I keep thinking of powers of 2 which are close to a multiple of 5. What I mean by that is, for example, suppose I am looking at 2 to the 2 square is 4. So I can very well write this as 4 to the power of 51 into 2. Think about it for a while. 4 to the power of 51 is 2 to the power of 102. 
into 2 means 2 to the power of 103. Now, what is the remainder of 4 from 5? It is 4. We all know that. But if we look at the negative remainder, it is minus 1. So instead of 4 to the power of 51, it can be written as minus 1 to the power of 51 into 2. And that is as good as minus 1 into 2. And that is as good as minus 2. And getting a remainder of minus 2 when I am dividing the number by 5, I can directly write it as 3 as well. 3 effectively I am getting from 5 minus 2. Getting a remainder of minus 2 from 5 is the same as getting a remainder of 3, is the same as getting a remainder of 8, is the same as getting a remainder of 13. I hope you get the drift. Very popular questions on this type are also to find out the last digit. Think about it. Is finding out the last digit that different from finding out the remainder? It's not. Think of a number. 3442. What is the last digit? 2. What is the remainder from 10? 2. 7,452. What is the last digit? Once again 2. What is the remainder from 10? Once again 2. But since it keeps on occurring very frequently, it's good if you have the last digits memorized. How will we do that? 0. Any power will always end in 0 because 0 into 0 is 0. Same thing is applicable for 1 also but not for 2. 2 to the power 1 ends in 2. 2 square ends in 4, 2 cube ends in 8, 2 to the power 4 is 16 or it ends in 6, then 6 into 2 is 12, so I get back 2 again, 3, 3 into 3 is 9, 9 into 3 is 27, 27 into 3 is 81, so there are few ways of doing this, I can do either 27 into 3 is 81 and get 1, or I can simply do 7 into 3 is 21 and I will still get the same value. 4 will be 4, 4 square is 16 and again 6 into 4 is 24, 5 will always be 5, 6 will always be 6, 7, you will realize the point I was making in case of 3 here, 7 to the power 1 is 7, 7 square is 49, so 9, 7 cube, most of you will take time to find out 7 cube, it's much simpler to simply do 9 into 7, 9 into 7 is 63, so I get a 3, 3 into 7 is 21, so I get a 1, 1 into 7 is 7 again. Okay. This proves a lot faster. Very similarly for 8, 8 square is 64, so 4. Now either do 8 cube or do 4 into 8. What do you find simpler? 4 into 8, 4 into 8 is 32. Either do 8 to the power 4 or just simply do 2 into 8, that is 16. Now you do 8 to the power 5 or do 6 into 8 is 48. And this is my cycle. For 9, it is simple enough, it will be either 9 or 1. How can we use these directly? Suppose my question is 327 to the power of 45532. And I am asked what is going to be the last digit. First things first. This question is no different from 7 to the power of 4532. Why? Because the last digit does not depend upon the fact whether these digits are 32 or 33 or 433. It's not going to make a difference to the original question. Then I look at the cycle for 7. Cycle for 7 is a cycle of 4 values. So I'll, I need to express this as 7 to the power of 4k plus something. Once again, here when I am dividing by 4, it is a function of just the last 2 digits. So this question is no different from 7 to the power of 32 because when dividing by 4, only the last 2 digits matter. 7 to the power 32. Now can you tell me what it is in 7 to the power of 4k plus what? Nothing. It is simply 7 to the power of 4k. Why? Because 32 is perfectly divisible by 4. Which means my answer will be 1. Let's take a simpler value. Say how about 49 to the power of 49? There you just need to analyze. Last digit is 9. Cycle is of 2. Whether the power is an odd power or an even power. It's an odd power. So it will be the first value here which is 9 if it was 49 to the power of 50 or 9 to the power of an even power then my answer would have been 1. Stay with us to continue the discussion on remainder theorem.